Okay hey guys, today I will be harvesting some tubers, cleaning up the beds, topping them off, and then doing some planting of uh, cool weather crops and some that I will be getting ready for spring. So come join me for the day. This bed is a mess. Definitely it's the first thing I'll be tackling. All right, let's get started. I decided not to grow strawberries in this bed this year, so I will be removing them one by one and uh, a lot of the runners have set so i'll get to pick them up and have some separate plants homegrown strawberries are so delicious and they grow well in containers and small spaces here's one strawberry i just separated most of them even make runners so you can divide them and grow more strawberries the next year I generally wait longer to harvest the tubers because in my garden, there's lack of sun. Everything tends to grow slower. So I like to give them more time to just, you know, develop as much as possible. And being in Southern California, the weather, it's not too cold. So a lot of them, even though the plants die back, uh, the roots are still, this, um, still living and um, the tubers would not get ruined. First thing I'll be harvesting are these purple yams. I'm really anxious to know how they did since I built this planter out last year. This is my favorite bed in the garden because it is tall enough to get quite a bit of sun when the season starts to warm up. Let's start digging. Oh my gosh, look at that. See what I'm seeing? <laughs> hmm. There it goes. One rotted out. I think these yam were planted in like midsummer or something. This side has the, the purple yam planted way earlier than the one I just dug up. Okay, we're ready for this. Oh, there's a baby one forming right there. The yam is bigger on this side. Next, I'm going to top off the bed. I like to fill up the last couple inches of my beds with some fresh potting soil or even just some compost that you make yourself. This is just some vermiculite. The vermiculite were used to propagate plants. Since I no longer need them, I'm just going to add them to this bed to improve drainage and moisture. I'll put in some compost. Look at these yummies. Got some worm castings. Vermicompost is definitely one of my favorite ways to reduce food waste. I love having access to fresh worm castings whenever I need to. They are full of nutrients and beneficial fungi, yet they will not burn your plants. There I got some sugar snap peas finally planted. Here are a few more original strawberries that I'm not going to transplant until I make sure the runners do well. This is my strawberry tomato from last year. Since the plant's still producing, I thought I would just leave it until I get new plants in. But in the meantime, I'm just going to help the plant remove the spider mites. Here's the grow bag that's been here for I think over two years now. Grow bags are so breathable and this one being so small, the soil tends to dry out really fast. Oops. Soil here has been completely dried out since I've been away, but you can see the green onions are super hardy, still looking green and standing up on their own. Since water drain out really fast throughout all the tiers, except for the last one because it has some kind of a waterproof material they put on the bottom. So the bottom tier, I usually would grow something more hardy and uh, water loving. The rest of them, I decided that I would kind of freshen up the soil, but also increase the moisture retention by adding vermiculite. Vermiculite is very light, so I wouldn't add too much weight to the grow bag. I do not use any new potting mix in this, just adding a little more nutrients like rock dust, worm castings, a little more of the 444 fertilizer. Just going to put everything back in and start planting. The crops that I'll be planting in here are red onion, cilantro, also known as coriander, and viola edible flowers. These are really good cool season crops and they don't really mind growing in small containers. During the cooler times of the year, I really like growing violas or violas and pansies, but I noticed that pansies require more light than violas. Finally, I'm just going to put a light layer of straw on top to retain more moisture, but the last here, I'm just going to leave it a little bit more open because the bottom tier, the soil stays pretty wet. To reduce transplant shock and to help the plants take up more nutrients, I like using Organic Rev. It is humic compounds along with some kind of a liquid fertilizer. In this case, I'm using the kelp extract.
These gorgeous Ashitabas have grown about two feet this winter. They really love our mild winter climate. So I just took apart the tomato cage from last year and sort of reassemble it into this fence border thing to prop the Ashitabas up. I'm so glad I was able to finish some of these projects before the storm came, which lasted about a week. To find out what in the world I was doing during the storm to keep busy, check out my shorts. It's such a beautiful, sunny, clear skies day. It has been raining for the past week. Now let's get back on track on gardening. All right, today I'm going to be tackling this bed that I did not complete filled this up last year because I got loofah growing but now that it's died back I'm looking forward to fill this bed up. This is the Vigal garden bed that I put together and kind of modified to um, give it, like two tiers. This grow bag has been here for two years. These are the two loofahs from last year and under here I got uh, shampoo ginger. I'm really anxious to dig up the shampoo ginger rhizome. I wonder if it grew any bigger because it put out a lot of leaf growth last year but I don't know is it because of my climate tell me if you guys are familiar with it um, the shampoo ginger is um, uh, I think it got enough sun to put out a lot of green growth last year but there were no flowers I don't know is it because our weather is too dry out here so I'll be relocating this hopefully it will flower this year right over this corner this is a Japanese mugwort it doesn't have that strong mugwort smell but it's just so tasty in soups and like they just look so gorgeous in a little shady area check this other one out this is also the japanese mugwort look how nicely that's growing in their shade i mean look at the comparison the height of this compared to the bed here it's just growing so low but still just so nice so this is a really great um uh, the plant for a shady spot which by the way I will be part of the great grow along gardening festival that's coming up I got some DIYs as well as garden tours to show you guys the, the, how to trellis really so I would love for you to join me I got the information in the description box below now let's get back to gardening oh goodness wow it's big <laughs> this thing really grew <laughs> It got so big. I didn't think it would be so hardy, even though it never flowered. This is still really cool to see how big the the rhizome is. And you know, to me, um, the fact that the rhizome really got so large, it's t it tells me that there is enough sun here. It might just be the humidity issue that you know prevents it from flowering. Because usually uh, when you grow things like ginger, the more sun you give it, um, the less pretty the leaves would look if you're in like an arid climate. But those, uh, the rhizomes do get much bigger when they're exposed to more sun. Oh, goodness. Yeah, that's not good. Oh my gosh, my phone just fell. Thank goodness for this reacher. Otherwise, I don't know how the heck I would be able to grab my phone and the gimbal back. Let me show you what just happened. I got the gimbal, which is like a tripod. It was standing one, two, three of these three points with the legs and then it fell in right down in there. Let's not put the camera there. <laughs> okay, I think that's better. Look how big this thing is. Oh my gosh. Oh crap. Broken root. Sorry. I think it's about to come up. Oh, see that? There's still a little more. Oh, there he goes. Wow. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Whoa. There he goes. Oh my goodness. Oh. <clears throat> After lifting this granite up, I'm just going to start filling up this bed, also doing the human culture style, which is mounding using some food scrap, garden prunings, branches, leaves, also shoveling those used soil, and then filling up the top couple of inches with some fresh 
potting mix. So far, that is all I got done around here. I just got to fill up this bed and figure out what I want to plant in here. There's so many different things I want to plant and there's just so little room. So thank you for joining me out in the garden. I hope you had enjoyed this vlog. If you have not subscribed to this channel, I'd love for you to do so and hit the bell button so that you can see how this garden will be evolving throughout the year and so on and for plants and seeds don't forget to check out my shop i'll leave the link down in the description box have a great day bye